Hmm, I have to say I'm enjoying the graphics. Those are some very well developed polygons. <clears throat> Okay, so here we are. We don't really know who we are or why we exist, but hey. What could possibly go wrong, right? Nothing to loot, nothing to see. Just an ordinary lab. Yep. Now that's an extremely unhelpful note. Everything's basically unknown. Even our ethnicity and gender is blanked out, because they don't know which gender you've chosen as the tractor creator, male or female. Oh, here's me trying to run to the door and, well, I've just realized that you need a code. Whoops. O seven two eight. Remember that, guys. O seven two eight. Oh, and by the way, the numpad actually works. That's a nice touch. It used to in the demo as well. Oh, come on, open faster. I've got loot to find, bosses to kill. Here we've got our first mention of mayflies in the cradle and our connection to it. But everything's still very hazy. Oh, that's just classic me. Missed the door first attempt. That's trippy. This gives me full on Death Stranding vibes. You know, that baby cradle. Let's have a quick chat with this little fella. Well, it's good to see another face. I thought I was on my own. And you're a metahuman too. What did you just call me? A metahuman? I don't know who you are. But I know what you are. You awakened the cradle. And that's something only a metahuman could do. You've lost your memory. Do you remember who you are? Let's be very unhelpful and not answer the question. Let's go with what happened. It must have been that fluctuation just now. It trapped me in the cradle. It could have robbed you of your memories. You can call me V. It seems that our interests are aligned, MetaHuman. Where are we? This place seems kinda dangerous. Let's ignore that that's a talking bird. This place is called a monolith. Rosetta uses this place to secure deviations and perform experiments on them. <sighs> I wasn't expecting this many. Okay, now let's so. ask the question that any sane person would have started with. Because why not? It's me after all. True. I used to be like you once, a metahuman, but it's a long story, and now is not the time. Why, oh, why did you come here, oh, one-eyed raven, that I'm completely not hallucinating? I came to secure a deviation, a paper butterfly. But I think something must have scared it. Right now, though, we need to move. I can show you the way out of this place, but only if you help me complete my mission first. All right, all you have to do is listen to what I tell you. Yep, I can see that happening, especially with my loot sense tingling, trying to loot every corner of the room. Yay, loot. More loot? Nope. Nope, still no. Sadly. Well, 
Oh, machete, our first loot. First of many. Let's see what unhelpful stuff does this guy have on him. Okay, nothing new, my bad. Let's continue with the melee training, shall we? This is a life form that has been infected with stardust. It's called a deviant. Our world has been overrun with deviants ever since Starfall. Ordinary humans can't take high levels of stardust exposure. When they do, they end up just like that thing. But you're a metahuman. You should be fine. In fact, if the conditions are right, you might even be able to use Stardust to your advantage. There is something visceral and satisfying about the melee in this game. It bucks a punch. Oh, and a crate. Let's go a looting, shall we? Personally, would have preferred a gun, but at this point, I'll take anything. Let's go put this guy to sleep. Filipizio, thank you very much. Oh, and we got ourselves our first medkit. Okay, we can collect notes to find lore. That's self-explanatory. Not sure. It seems we've stepped on a butterfly. Project Butterfly, to be exact. The usual top-secret stuff. And we're in the middle of it all. So many markers, don't know which way to loot. Wait, great, great. More loot. Okay, hat of awesomeness. We'll take. At this point, I'll take anything really. Rustic or not. It's gonna teach us about gear and its properties. But sure. That's for later. I think I should have gone up there behind me. I might have missed a crate. Oh, good morning. Good night. So much loot. Oh, and a medkit. Yep, your standard ragged boots. Alright, more medkits. No loot at the back of the storeroom. Unplayable game, thank you. Alt F4. Definitely. Yep, let's go touch Spectres and Apparitions. What could possibly go wrong? I think I've requested way too much from this graphics card. I have no way to re-record it, sorry. My name is Victor Hammett. What's your name? I... don't know. All I know is that... I'm a monster. My mother... My father... And everyone else... They're gone. And it was all my fault. Hey, hey. Try and stay calm. I'm here, and I will do everything to help. It's no use. No one can help me. It would be better for everyone if I just... Just leave me alone. Please, don't waste your time on me. I'm afraid I can't do that. And you're not a monster. In fact, you're very, very special. You just need to learn how to control your power. Once you do that, you can help fix this broken world. We can do that together. Okay, so this area looks very much like it did in the demo. My butterfly. It's flying. Yes. Your first
first deviation. Look how gentle it is. I remember my name now. It's Mitsuko. It means child of light. It's my first creation. I will create more. Classic. At the corner of my eye, I've seen this crate here, and I wanted to get it. We're gonna come back here in a moment. First, we need a bit of lore, but you know, secret loot crate. Speaking of loot crate, here we go. Okay, food and water, never bad. something powerful to challenge the evolutionists and I think I finally found it you hey we can secure other deviations we can use them to forge a new path and bring about true evolution this will be the mayflies mission this is why we'll fight mayflies that's right mayflies small yet invincible humanity may seem puny now but we'll prove we can endure I know tutorial and all, but I can't wait to get to the real world. I've been waiting for this game so impatiently. Stopping myself from playing the demo. Not to burn myself out on, you know, incomplete content. Now we can go. We just need to kill the angry suitcase. Thank you. Good night. Ow. That had to hurt. Gimme, gimme. It's basically Pavlovian at this point. Duck when looting. You know guys, let's make a spitting suitcase. Out of a suitcase monster. Uh -huh. I wonder who came up with the idea for that feature in the game. Must have been one hell of a party. Deviation. We found it. Reach out your left hand. And see if you can feel the rhythm of it. Then try and secure it. Oh, and if you're wondering about my weird key bindings, well, the short answer is cripple, so that's why. That's a nice touch. and look what I found. A meta. Only just woken up. They were kind enough to activate the cradle and set me free. Thank you, meta-human. Your help means a lot to me. You can call me Mitsuko. I used to be a meta-human as well. Rosetta did all kinds of experiments on me. That is, until V saved me. Mitsuko is a very special meta. She can sense even the tiniest fluctuations in the stardust. It's thanks to her that I was able to take refuge in this place after Starfall. You're safe here. What's the Starfall you mentioned earlier? About 20 years ago, Rosetta triggered a major stardust fluctuation during one of their experiments. As a result, some great ones slipped through, entering into our world. They brought increased levels of stardust with them. That poison has seeped into every corner of our world now, spawning countless deviants and other dangers. So, we all used to be Rosetta test subjects? That's what Rosetta does. At first, they just locked deviations away. 
But then they figured out that deviations could be harnessed to make humans stronger. That's when they commenced their experiments. In the name of human progress. As a result, they created metahumans, like me and you, to Rosetta. We are the future. It is our potential to harness stardust that they value above everything else. It's all they care about. And they're not wrong. Metahumans are mankind's last hope. We were created by Rosetta, but we don't take orders from them anymore. We left. We call ourselves the Mayflies now, and we do things differently. So, this paper butterfly is the deviation you were looking for? Yes. The butterfly is an emissary of sorts. I wanted it to help rescue other metas. The recent fluctuation must have startled it. The important thing right now is to secure it and ensure its safety. See that thing in the center of the room? It's a device for securing deviations. This makes them more useful and safer to be around. This should be called the jailbait the game. Imagine explaining to anyone that you've had a one-on-one -on -one in a distant cabin with a girl of questionable years and even more questionable enrobement. And your only witness is a disappearing one-eyed raven. Yeah, that's gonna go well. <laughs> oh boy. The butterfly is recovered. I think it likes you. Let's ask her about the deviation. Deviations can be very dangerous if not taken care of. They can radiate stardust, which can lead to all kinds of unpredictable consequences. And this is why we created the Mayflies. We make cradles and securement units to keep deviations contained. We're finding ways for humans and deviations to live in harmony. This is our best chance of cleaning up Rosetta's mess. The Mayflies? Not a very threatening name. It's a name that embodies who we are. We resist Rosetta's evolution. Mayflies as a species can survive almost anything, even Starfall and Rosetta. So, what exactly are deviations anyway? No one's exactly sure what they are, just that they're not bound by the physical laws of our world. They came from another dimension, something we call rift space. When deviations get stressed, they release stardust. We think this brings our world and rift space closer together. Sometimes, it becomes possible to pass between the two planes of existence. And when that happens, all hell breaks loose. We believe that's what caused Starfall. So, what exactly are you trying to do? Some deviations are friendly, like the butterfly. But others, like the ones inside monoliths, are extremely dangerous. It's not practical to secure all of them. But if we can learn more about them, maybe we can find ways to live alongside them. That's the goal. You must be prepared. The stardust just keeps spreading. And we aren't sure why. I have to say, I'm enjoying the character design. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, that was the ominous sound of peaceful living. It must be a siren. Shit, it must have gotten through. Come on, Meta. A deviation from another world just entered this space. And it won't go down without a fight. Take the butterfly with you. It can help. No, no. Hold your horses, lads. Looting first. Looting first. You know what? Okay, let's try to put on the vest, even though, frankly, I would prefer that we go as we are, if you know what I mean. Because the, the vest is really not good in terms of, um, how should we call this, aesthetics. Okay, so here we get a basic tutorial about skills, deviant power and mood. Uh, basically, it's critters you gotta keep fed, like, you know, one of those old games. One of those you used to have on a handheld device. And we've got a butterfly in the cradle on our back. And with all the eagerness to get the content out to YouTube, I forgot to loot upstairs. 
I should be caned for my negligence. It's unforgivable. This is basically an introduction to crafting and gathering. I'll talk about it as we go. As you can see, we get 10 logs per hit. With better tools, we will get much more per hit. Though the time to cut a tree, as far as I understand it, does not change. The same for harvesting any other materials. After some redundant farming I couldn't resist, let's go put down a campsite. It's your spawn point for doing map activities, and it's also some basic crafting. Food, basic arrows, that sort of thing. At least for now. As one would expect with the progression of the main story, your capabilities evolve drastically. But that's a story for another time. For now, let's get on with the first mission. Just a quick note, these are packs of arrows, not singular items. We're crafting 15 arrows. Let's just quickly cook some water because, you know, survival game paranoia. Let's also grab a crossbow and a club. We'll need those going forward for quite a long while. I have to say, this game is very pretty for an MMO. Alright, let's go start the first fight. That's what happens when you don't pay your mobile phone bills. Nope, the tentacle fingers are not a crit point. Bit of a goof on my part. I wanted to use the deviation. Wrong button. This siren. So strong. Summon the butterfly. It will fight alongside you. I have to admit, at this point, the deviation is pretty much in my way because could have killed the thing just shooting it. Look at its health up. Like three, three shots and dead. But I guess they have to teach you somehow. Okay, with the phone bill paid, let's get cracking. Okay, let's go advance the quest. Leave a comment down below if you think we're gonna capture the deviation. Do it now, no cheating. What a surprise. Let's go have a next questionable encounter with a questionable young lady. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> oh boy, a lot actually. Definitely a lot. Yes, let's inform her that the deviation escaped because, you know, she didn't Damn. look out the window. It escaped. That was a difficult fight. Just driving it away was enough. Yep, very difficult. And it's all thanks to you, Meta, for saving us. You're tougher than you look. That's twice now you saved me. That thing was huge. How did it get in here? It's like I said. We think deviations are sometimes capable of passing between the physical world and rift space. Could be wreaking havoc in the physical world right now, even as we speak. Where did I go? The physical world? Yes. Mitsuko created this rift space, a refuge from the dangers of the physical world. Or so we thought. Do you 
Think that deviation will come back? What if it returns with greater disruptions? It's possible. We can't just sit here and wait though. Meta, will you go back to the physical world with me? There is, it seems, no alternative. And I would like to see what the world has become. I have to say I'm disappointed it's not fully voice acted yet. Not good, to be honest. Since Starfall, it's been 20 years of chaos. But you've got a cradle, and I'll be there to help guide you. Together we'll be fine. Are you coming too, Mitsuko? They must have had a setback with voice acting. It was supposed to be fully Mitsuko voice acted. Too important. The Great Ones would descend on her the second she set foot in the physical world. We encountered some trouble earlier, and that's why Mitsuko is hiding here. It seems we have no choice but to go after that thing. Let's go. Take the butterfly with you. Put it in your cradle. That way, I can lend you some of my strength. Hopefully we'll meet again one day. When the stardust is stable enough. It looks like this is goodbye. Good luck, Meta. Before you go. If you have any questions, I can try and answer them for you. After a quick check if she has something more to say, let's go. That's exactly how this game sucked me in when I first saw Co Carnage playing this during the CBT. <laughs> yep. That's accurate. And I still forgot to loot the upstairs. Dang. That reminds me of a From episode. I think there was a door in the middle of an evil forest or something. And now we're in a battle royale. I have to say, the raven... That's a nice view. The raven is a nice touch. You don't get the kite, you know, glider or anything like that. Uh, look at that. You just hold them by the foot. years after Starfall, and the world is still infested with stardust. It looks like the monoliths here have been reactivated too. They might hold the key to all the stardust pollution. You know what? I can't figure out where to land. See you on the ground. On second thought? No. You know what? That's a pretty nice glide. Despite the fog, the game looks really impressive. Let's remember it's still an MMO. Set up a territory. This is your teleportable base. It's uh, basically a piece of floor at this point, but you know, you can build a house like the other guy. Let's see where we can plant it down. Gun, 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 gun. I had to kill it, guys. I had to kill it. Oh, sh I mean, oh boy, that's going exactly as planned. Good boy. Sit. Sit. How many crits does it take? Oh, I think I just did something I shouldn't have done just yet. I'll take that. Nice work. I've managed to unlock some memetics from Mitsuko. If you access them through your cradle, you'll be able to craft and build what we need. You know what? On second thought, this place is not good. We're clipping into the hill. See you in a moment. Okay, you know what? This is a much better location. We got resource nodes nearby. And some relatively flat ground to build on. This will do for now. Let's get our upgrade tree going. In this game they're called mimetics. They want a furnace and a disassembly bench. Let's get cracking. Here is one, and uh, here is two. Even with memetics, you still won't be able to craft anything out of thin air. We'd better gather some ore and logs. Lord Crow said farming, so let's go. I'm a notorious farmer, so I'm gonna just show you this one time, and after that, you know, I'm just gonna do it off screen. Also need a furnace and a disassembly bench to process the materials we gather. 
Okay, let's quickly build what the quest calls for. A furnace and a disassembly bench. The good thing about this game is that, uh, for me at least, you need two furnaces per person. I'm used to these sort of games where you need like six or ten, which is absurd. Thankfully, one is good enough. And another one for coal. We'll see that in a moment. Use the furnace to refine raw materials into something more practical. We'll need it for advanced items. This game is really lacking a snapping system. I wish there was a way to just snap them to the grid. Spoiler alert, we don't have enough for this disassembly bench. In the meantime, let's grab some useful stuff from the tech tree. Better tools will give us better yields when we harvest. Even though it doesn't look like it from the name, it's both for logs and rocks. And presto, with the magic of video editing, we now have enough for a disassembly bench. Nice. This is a strong foundation for us to build upon. I've set up a journey interface to help track our progress. For each task you complete, you'll unlock some supplies we can use. So far, what we've got won't do much against those deviants out there. We need proper weapons and armor. There are some abandoned Rosetta facilities nearby. Maybe we could find some useful supply crates there. I've marked their locations on your map. As far as you are concerned, dear viewers, we will be going there very soon. In the meantime, I have some egregious amount of farming to do, so be right back. Before I forget, we need a couple of things from the tech tree. We need air drying to get the food that doesn't spoil, and we need the basic workbench for ammunition and stuff, because I feel kind of naked going with this few arrows into the world. So yeah, let's grab our essentials with the workbench, and let's grab the air drying, and all the stuff along the way. I don't need the dishes for now, but you know, that's how the tech tree flows. With our new stove and drying rack in place, let's see what we can do. We're gonna use the stove to boil water and uh, the drying rack to make preserved food. So that it's not, you know, obnoxious every five minutes. We might have run into a bit of a snag. For drying we need salt, and for salt we need seawater. We need to boil it out and make salt. That's how you do this in this game. So, you know, placing the meat there is all well and good, but we do need salt. One second. Yep, that's where the coast is. That's 700 meters from our current location. It's gonna be a little bit of a trek. So, uh, see you there. I'm not gonna make you watch all that. <laughs> or maybe? Nope. Nope, I do want watch time, so nope. Okay, so here we are at the sea, picking up some seawater to boil for salt. I think the game might be trying to tell me something. If the weight of my backpack is crushing me, I think it's time to go home. Let's quickly see what the workbench has to offer. But first, a pack rat like me sure as hell needs some storage. I need to put that somewhere, because I'm so overburdened I can do stuff. It's pretty bad. Storage. Yay. I peaked. Oh my god, I peaked. With those destructions out of the way, back to the workbench. Oh yes, the copper pickaxe. That's exactly what we want. Because, as I said before, it's actually a copper tool set. It's not just the pickaxe. Let's grab that, let's go grab some arrows, and let's go farming. Be right back. As you can see, our salt is humming along nicely. We finally got some meat going. Let's go clear that quest location we've been talking about. If I get myself unstuck, that is. 
Oh, and another player. <laughs> Let's see what a crossbow is good for. Whoops, not like that. Nope. Thank you. I have to say, without a single head kill shot, it does not inspire me with confidence. Thankfully these guys are not exactly running at me. I can quietly loot and see what's about. Evil is about, that's what's about. If I remember rightly... Oh, come on, Michael, come on. Dude, really? <laughs> oh well. I guess there's more zombies where that came from. <laughs> oh boy. Acid? Hmm, I wonder what kind of acid. Never mind. It's supposed to be a family friendly channel. Let's quickly loot the bejesus out of this place. As usual. Okay, nothing big here. Whoa. Did he just clip through the wall for a second, or was that just me? I could have sworn he was on the other side of that wall. And then he wasn't. Let's go meet the neighbors, shall we? That's just rude. Nope. Please stay away. No touching. Okay. Touching will work. This touching will work. Oh, the respawn appears to be quite aggressive. <laughs> And limb dismemberment. Oh, oh, ow. Limb dismemberment seems to be present as well. Good. Thank you. Don't die. The thumping sound on that kill is epic. I mean, on the melee hit. And that's a home run. <laughs> really, the melee kills are pretty fun in this game. Wait a second, I almost missed the box. That's a cardinal sin. 
Okay, that was anticlimactic. Jump rope and scraps. Damn. Copper ammo, I'll take that. That's the basic ammo type. Let us sally forth and see what the quest brings us, shall we? I remember there were lootables nearby in the demo. Somewhere here. I'm not exactly sure where it was. Oh, yep. Alright. Got it. For a second there I thought I found a bow. But no, it's just a cloth hanger. Damn. <laughs> One can dream. The loot bug in me is disappointed there is just one crate here. Come on. I expected more. At least some, you know, uh, dismountable loot. Out of all the sides, I chose the correct one last. Yep, that's classic me. Thank you very much. Activators, that's very nice. Those are medkits. Our moonwalking friend here seems to have bugged out a little bit. Yep, let's talk to the strange woman. Hands off my stuff. You always introduce yourself so politely. You're pretty cocky for someone who doesn't even have a weapon. Actually, no, I'm not cocky. I might be a see you next Tuesday, but I'm definitely not cocky. A cradle on your back? Are you a mayfly? How interesting. I thought I was the only mayfly left. Where's your cradle? You know, she's a mayfly and all. I'm just a researcher. Not every mayfly was out there capturing deviations. We had different roles to play. Since we're both mayflies, what's your name? I'm Mary. It's a good thing I met you. I'm thinking as fellow mayflies, we should be able to help each other out. I came here to investigate a deviation that's been causing issues. I think it's connected to a recently reopened monolith nearby. Sounds like we might be after the same thing. Wouldn't you know it? Don't tell me you're going to try and take on a powerful deviation barehanded. Even an ordinary deviant could tear you apart right now. You're pretty inexperienced, aren't you? I'm going to give you a blueprint. Use it to make yourself a gun. Trust me. You'll need one if you want to stand even half a chance of surviving out there. While you're doing that, I have other matters to attend to. Once you're done, come find me in Deadsville. It's the nearest survivor settlement. We can plan our next steps from there. After all, two heads are better than one. And I'd never turn down help. So another Mayfly survived, and I can't remember her. 
My memory's been patchy ever since Mitsuko revived me. Just to be safe, we'd better not share the existence of Mitsuko with that woman. That blueprint is rock solid, though. Whoops, it seems I interrupted our feathered friend here. I guess we'll just have to live with that. This assembly bench will let you take objects you've scavenged and break them down into useful materials. That's just the scrapping tutorial. Basically things you pick up in the world you can scrap for mats. As the birdie said. I might have overinvested in uh, storage and a drying rack, so we're probably gonna have to clear our location because I don't have the points for what I need to advance the quest, so let's get going, I think. Turns out a quick XP farm on the previous location was enough to get me a level up, so let's grab it. Oh, and it turns out we have the opportunity to talk about this system. Every five levels you get a specialization. Basically, a boost to your selector of some capacity, lasting through the entire session. Though you can reset it later, but it's not free. Weight reduction I don't need. The stove thing, that's a pretty much a team play thing, and since I'm playing this alone, I don't need it. And the base defense, if I'm not mistaken, that's a PvP thing, so... By process of elimination, the ammo factory will be the best. As you can see you get a lot of those. And you get a bonus once you're specialized in two things at the same time. I mean the same category of boost. I think here it calls it an identity. Basically if you have a couple of these you get a list down here you can use. Let's grab the quest items and see what we can do about Pushing things forward. Great, we can use that blueprint to make both guns and ammo. If you want to make ammo, though, you'll need to do it at a synthesis bench. I have to say, I feel vaguely cheated. Our feather friend said that all we need to do is build this workbench and everything will be fine and dandy. Now he says we need another workbench, but sure, let's carry on. This workbench is practically your hub for weapons and armor. As you can see, you've got all the tabs and all the stuff you need to build weapons. Here you have uh, crafting materials, that is, components, essentially, for weapons. You build these components first, and then you just craft a weapon, almost instantly. You've got a shotgun here, though we will just be using a pistol. I don't think you need anything more powerful than the crossbow you already have at this stage in the game, but, you know. That's just me. You've got all the tabs for the stuff that you're gonna have, including said crossbow and a melee weapon. There are weapon tiers available, but we will have to stick to tier 1 for now, because they require far more advanced materials, like ingots and whatnot. We don't have that, not even close. Because we need to refine metals first, and then we need all-purpose plastic. Tier 2 is basically a whole different note set that you need to unlock to get even the ability to craft these materials but uh, oh, as you can see beryllium and bronze ingots not even close forget it we just need to stick to our guns here no pun intended let's get the tier one and just hope for the best and as you can see hold to confirm just lit up all you need to do is click and there's your gun Let's equip it as a secondary for now. I don't need a gun, and I'm not sure if I'll be using it, because, as I said, the crossbow is more than sufficient. I just did it to advance the quest, though we will need a gun, a much better gun, later on. But that's for the future. With a bit of off-screen farming out of the way, let's get our mimetics going. The game wants us to get basic gear, so let's get down to it. As you can see, there's a lot of blueprints that just got unlocked. And it's quite important that it's set gear, because set gear has certain bonuses. But we will get to that in a moment, I think. Now that we have this, we let's just move the quest along. 
because now we just need to craft any amount of ammunition. Given that I already have some pistol ammo because I picked it off uh, some mobs whilst farming, so let's just create one set of pistol ammo to fulfill the quest. Because I won't really be using pistol ammo at this point in time. Good. I'm sure you'll need that weapon soon enough. Wait. I just noticed a teleportation tower was activated at Deadsville. Did Mary do that? We can use it to teleport straight there. Open your map and try it out. Activating teleportation towers will let us get to places much faster and avoid any dangers along the way. Let's quickly pick up the rewards, because as you can see, you get rewards every time you do an activity. And early on, you basically get them like every 30 seconds, it seems. But once we're done, let's uh, teleport to Mayfly Mary and see what she has to say. Because that's where our quest leads us at this point. We need to find the point and click to teleport, or should I say, click and hold to, tele to teleport. This small town and other towns like it are your local hub. The traditional MMO style NPCs, quests and mail you'd find in towns all over other games. Let's take a look. Oh boy, that's a lot of stuff. Nope, we won't be going for that. I'll read that off camera. Oh, and we do get a bike, I think. Yeah, yeah, but that's the area where you get a bike. Let's see what she has to say. Good. You made it. I'm guessing that gun served you well. Let's go for the bottom option. It might be optional lore. Thanks for bringing me here. We will go with the major options later. Yeah, this was the quickest way to bring you here. These towers are even supposed to let you travel between worlds, but I haven't been able to figure out how. Maybe you'll have more luck. Either way, I'm glad it got you here. Deadsville is the perfect place to dig up info on the area. That merchant over by the old truck looks like she gets around. Maybe she knows something useful. We get the last tutoriali pop-up before we go to talk to the lady. It's about tracking your quest, because I imagine there will be a lot more here as we advance through the game. Oh, survival, has nothing has changed, really. And this is the tower she was talking about. This is an instance on the server. You can travel to other instances if one is too crowded or something's broken. You can do it from here. They have a very nice way of sort of putting basic MMO mechanics into the game such that they feel organic. Because this doesn't really stand out. It's not a shining pillar of awesomeness, right? Let's quickly have a look and see what it actually looks like. If you open up this, you just get... Uh, a list of instances they are called worlds here and you've got the population the name and that's pretty much it let's go talk to the lady i wonder if they fixed her because she used to have a voice that really didn't match her age come take a look anything that catches your eye i'm always open for business i didn't come here to shop and yep, I think the voice is still kind of bad. Wait, I've never seen you before, but you're a mayfly, ain't you? Oh, thank goodness. I could really use some help. My name's Claire. Claire Lay. Normally I'm a wandering merchant, but now I'm stuck here. I sent a team over to a place called the Rotten Manor three days ago to collect some goods for me. But they never came back. It's possible that they ran off with the goods. Don't be so cynical. I've been through thick and thin with them. They wouldn't do that to me. I'm afraid that something must have happened to them. Rumor is the Rotten Manor seen a surge of deviance recently. I suspect there's a deviation behind it. What kind of deviation? All I know is what I heard from that well-dressed gentleman over there. He should be able to tell you more. There's no question. That guy stands out. We'd better talk to him and see what he knows. Good luck. Oh, 
And uh, I'll happily pay a reward if you can recover my stuff for me. I'll mark Rotten Manor on your map. Make sure to stock up on ammo before you go, all right? Okay, before we go do our first clear, let's see what the guy has to offer, because we still have to talk to him before things kick off. He will offer us some rewards and stuff. Yes, let's talk to the weird guy in the suit. And know the place for the first time, through the unknown, unremembered gate. Nope, I ain't starting a sentence with sorry. Too British. We're going with option one. Are you rehearsing for something? Ah, a mayfly. And one who seems to be brimming with potential. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Do you know about a deviation affecting this area? You've come to the right man. I am Samuel Lowe. A humble scholar specializing in the fascinating phenomena we call deviations. And as for you, you seek keys with which to unlock the Dark Tower, don't you? But I'd be wary of what else you might open up. Do you always speak in riddles like this? I was merely setting the mood. The world still deserves something poetic. Don't you think? My thoughts exactly. Now... You're interested in the deviation inside that monolith, aren't you? But the tower is locked up tight, and its keys are rift anchors across the wetlands. Rift anchors? Those things are made by Rosetta, aren't they? Activating them should give us access to the rift space inside the monolith. Spot on. And now tell me, where do you think those anchors would be? Usually places with the heaviest stardust pollution. The Rotten Manor would definitely be one of them. Indeed. I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do, Mayfly. I'm sure it will be a remarkable story to share. By the way, I wouldn't mind adding another deviation to my collection. Okay, so this teaches us map progression. You need to unlock several other tankers to go to the next area. Essentially, several dungeons and mini-boss fights you need to clear before you can move forward. Let's see what the lady has to say about that. I have it a slight yet undiagnosed hiccup during the first Just sentence. She wants us to, to split up and do the hard work for her. Place must be Nothing new here. Oh, and one more thing. I have a motorcycle here you can use. That and we do get a bike. Along. That's the long and short of it. By the way, if you've made it this far into the video, like, comment, subscribe. Do it now. It really helps. I think we should slowly wrap up with this positive accent right here. Wow, that's oh, a sweet yeah. little baby. This looks like it'll be fun to ride. Before we ride off into the sunset though, if you like this sort of format, do let me know. I might have uh, another episode, because technically speaking, it's like three hours of footage to make you one hour of video. I need to know that it's actually worthwhile doing. If not, I'll just have episodic clears of the locations and boss fights and whatnot. Thanks for sticking with me this long, I really appreciate it. The game is great, I will be doing more content for it, that's for sure. In what format? Well time will tell. Whichever way it goes, I hope to see you there. If you'd like it to go a certain way, do leave a comment down below. I will surely take it into consideration, because so, ultimately, I'm doing this for you guys, not for myself. Let's ride off into the sunset. Whoops. <laughs> That's a nice way to end the video. Anyways, see you there, guys. Cheers.